we want to start off by talking about data processing, not using Spark, but using just plain old Scala, the higher order methods that exist on Scala collection libraries. Now, the reason for doing this will become much more obvious when we get to using Spark uh, because of the fact that Spark was created with the idea of Scala collections in mind. But there's kind of a deeper reason, and that is because Spark is distributed and parallelized. And if you're used to doing data processing with just writing loops and going through things manually, that doesn't that form of working on your data doesn't nicely extend across multiple machines. And one of the big advantages of Spark is that you can use it for cleaning your data. And one of the big advantages of using uh, Spark with Scala is then you can use a single language across all of your data processing from, from cleaning up the data to uh, pulling data out of, of repositories and, as well as doing your analysis. So I'm going to play in this video with some data that I pulled from this site. Unfortunately, as you can read here, this site is going to go away in the near future and therefore you probably won't be able to get data from here. I uh, used the web interface just in case you are watching this in the very near future. But these data sets I'm actually putting in my Git repository. In general, I won't. Uh, most of the data I will just tell you how you can get to it and I'm not going to store it all on Git. I'll let you uh, copy it down. But because these are likely to disappear in the near future, especially in this particular format, I decided that, that a Git repository would be a good place for them. So, the files that we're going to be working with are, I have two CSV files. I'm actually going to play with one for Minnesota. And we should look at that data real quick. Um, so this is a CSV, a comma separated values file. In many ways, it's a well-behaved file. You can see that it has the day, this uh, JD is the day of the year, the month, a state ID, which we don't care about because it's the same for this whole file, unless we were going to keep both the Minnesota data and the Texas data, because then they would be separate, a year, and you'll note that this data is going back to 1895. Uh, this happens to be for Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Then the amount of precipitation, the amount of snow, the average temperature for that day, the maximum temperature for that day, and the minimum temperature for that day. And this file has 42,000 lines in it. So it's a reasonable size file. It's definitely not big enough that you have to do uh, use a framework like Spark, which is good because we're not going to. We want to look at this. We want to load it in and then do some basic operations on it using the kind of standard uh, Scala approach to this. So I'm going to go over to Eclipse and I'm going to make a new package. I'll call it standard Scala. Package names aren't supposed to have any capitals in them, so I don't capitalize the Scala. <clears throat> it was actually hard to make my fingers not capitalize the S in Scala. And then we will make a new object for our temperature data. And inside of here, we'll put a main. Now, this is something that we could do fairly nicely inside of a REPL. Uh, and so for exploring your data, the, the uh, REPL works well. Uh, but for writing proper data applications, it's nice to actually write some code that you can edit. That way we can more easily see when we mess things up and go back and fix them. So I'll just put in a main here. And I want to load in this file, this MN212142, etc. You know what? I don't feel like typing that. Let's come over here and let's copy it. So in plain old Scala, when I want to read something in, I use a source. And so I can do scala.io.source. There's a from file method, and I can pass it the file name that I want to read in. Now, source is an iterator of characters. It's really not all that useful to me, so I don't forget it. I'll say source.close down here. I actually want the lines of this, 
and so I will say lines is equal to source.getLines. Now, when we looked in this file, you'll note that the top line, which is very helpful to us as humans here, is this header line. Uh, Scala doesn't really need that. In fact, when we're parsing it, these things are all numbers, and uh, that top line is not numbers. So I'm going to throw it away. I am going to drop one here. Then I want to take all of those lines and process them and make an array of data values. Now we could store this because all of the values that we're going to keep are numeric. Uh, and for on this screen, they almost all look like integers except that one. Turns out that the precipitation and the snowfall are measured uh, in decimal values, so we would need doubles for those. We could make this an, make each line an array of doubles. Uh, we could also make a tuple that represents it. I'm actually going to go with a case class because I kind of do want ints for things like days and years, but I want doubles for all of the weather data uh, because even though the temperatures could be stored as ints, when I start doing things like averages and whatnot, it's much better to have a, a double there. <clears throat> so I am going to make a case class and I'm going to call it temp data. It'll wind up having our object here as its companion object. And I am going to put in all of the stuff that I need for it. I think I actually took one character off there when I was doing that. Here we go. So I need a day, which is an int. I need a day of year, which is an int. I need the month, which is an int. I need the year, which is an int. I need the, I'm going to go, let's go with precip. B-R-E-C-I-P, which is a double. I need the snow, which is a double. T average is a double. T max is a double. And last, T min is a double. Okay, so there is a nice case class that matches the file that we have here, at least the fields we're gonna keep. Note that the state ID is gone. And now I need to take these lines, which is an iterator of string, and make it into something like an array of temp data. So in order to do that, I'm going to take our lines and I'm going to map them. So one of the higher order methods that you should be familiar with is map. It takes a function and it applies that function to every element in a collection and gives you back a new collection with the results of that function. So what this function here is going to do is it's going to take a line of text, it's going to split it apart, and it's going to make a temp data out of it. And I am going to use the Scala syntax where I have a curly brace and I'm going to put in my function here using the rocket notation. So I'm going to split up my lines on commas. Turns out this works quite nicely with this data file uh, because it is a simple CSV. They didn't do anything like put quotes with co with strings that have commas in the middle. That makes things a fair bit more complex. So I've split this up and now I want to build a temp data from it. So I'm going to return a temp data that has p sub zero converted to an int p sub one converted to an int, p sub 2 converted to an int. Now at this point it's good to go look at our file. 0, 1, 2, that was day, day of year, month. We're going to skip 3 and then 4 is year. So I'm a p sub 4 dot 2 int and all the rest are converted to doubles. So let's copy that and that was our precipitation, snow, average, max, min. Obviously, I need to change the numbers on these. So six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, 
it might be helpful to see if this works. Okay, now one thing to note here, this now is an iterator of temp data. That iterator, would we could only pass through it once because iterators are consumed when you go through them. So I am going to convert this to an array here so that we are then able to close out our data file. We will have our data kind of stored. Just to see if this works, let's go ahead and let's print out how about data dot take five for each print line. See the first five lines of it. And I run it. Oh, and it crashes. Why did it crash? Well, if you look here, it says number format. There is an, an input string with a dot in it. And of course, it turns out the first thing you have to do in data science is and data analytics is get your data in the right format. And all of this screen looked happy, but if I just go down one screen, you'll see there's a bunch of these that have dots. This is what is used by that weather service for values that they don't have. So for example, this was a day when they didn't record a snowfall. Um, and yeah, and there's a fair number of those in this file. So we have to decide how we are going to handle those. We'll come back in the next video and we'll talk about how we can clean up this data, how we want to handle that, and then we'll look more at doing the actual uh, data analysis on the data once we've read it in.